Hello, happy Thursday, everyone. Welcome. I am Meredith, and I am here with our message for the 24th of August, 2023. We have the sun in Virgo. The moon is in Sagittarius, Saturn, Pluto, Neptune, Venus, and Mercury. Retrograde. Woo! Yeah. All right. Light Seers Tarot, energy atmosphere of the day. What's on offer to us? How might we make the most of the energy atmosphere? Our first card. Well, there's a blessing. Ten of Cups. We had this in yesterday's reading, and we were talking about what it takes to maintain our Ten of Cups, Four of Wands lifestyle. So it's the first card out. Yesterday's reading feels to me energetically, even while I was shuffling, it came to me that today's reading may be a continuation of yesterday's, meaning the universe may be giving us a bit more detail or giving us a bigger nudge to take a step into whatever action plan is required to maintain your Ten of Cups. Now, do recall, this is the Ace of Cups to the power of 10. The Ace of Cups message is love, bliss, joy, and happiness on overflow. And 10 in tarot is all about fulfillment. So what does it take on your part to maintain your Ten of Cups lifestyle? Your happiness, your bliss, and your joy. Coming next, we have first the Emperor. Well, it means... Investing your energy well <laughs> and commanding it very well. Using your knowledge, putting your knowledge to work for you. The emperor is Aries fire. It's Aries energy all day long. And one of the things that I so appreciate about the emperor when he shows up in a reading is for the most part, from one deck to the next, he tends to appear quite relaxed on whatever throne he sits upon. So here he is with a very relaxed posture. He's at ease with himself. He's at peace with himself. There's harmony and there's balance here. And this is divine masculine energy. So take action in a peaceful way. Draw upon your knowledge base and put it to work for you in the now. Coming with the emperor. Wow. Now that does not happen often. They'll show up in a reading together, but falling out of the deck together, there's the Empress. Ooh, excellent. So divine counterparts here. And this is a great representation of our divine masculine and our divine feminine energy working together in harmony and in balance, which was yet again, a message that came profoundly out of yesterday's reading. And so here it is with the top of tarot. These two are the mother and the father of tarot. And you don't get a clearer message about engaging your divine masculine and your divine feminine in a unified way as profoundly as you do right here and sitting next to the Ten of Cups. So what does it take to maintain your Ten of Cups lifestyle? It takes you showing up as an emperor in your divine masculine and an empress in your divine feminine to, to create the kind of foundation that is blissful for you. Let's see what comes next. <laughs> Justice. This was also in yesterday's reading. So the, the message of maintaining harmony, balance, compassion, mercy uh, for oneself and one's sphere of influence is very much alive and well in today's reading as it was yesterday. So, you know, Mercury went retrograde yesterday, joining all these other retrograde planets. And I know everybody gives a big sigh and a huge eye roll when it comes to Mercury shifting into retrograde. And I want to remind everyone that retrogrades are an opportunity to reflect to reconsider, to redo, right? Uh, and have another pass at some, some things that 
we were not necessarily feeling serendipity for at, at a time when some of these planets were direct, right? Now we may have had a point of inspiration to take an action, though we didn't. We didn't follow through on it. And the retrogrades are giving us an opportunity to create an energy atmosphere or to exist within an energy atmosphere that is allowing us to reconsider, redo, reflect, uh, reminisce even, take a walk down memory lane and resurrect uh, another redo, resurrect some experiences and inspirations we had earlier on. I do feel an influence of uh, eclipse energy here with all this retrograde showing up. So we've got rare and uncommon energies to engage in these rare and uncommon energies out of the retrogrades are giving us inspiration to take action steps in being co-creative with the divine all to maintain our 10 of cups, four of wands lifestyle. And what does that take? It takes great, uh, great harmony, great balance, and knowing how to spend one's energy in a fair and equitable way. And my sense is, from yesterday's reading to this, that perhaps we have been volunteering our energies in a variety of ways that have been fulfilling, and now it's time to turn that fulfillment that's pouring out of these 10 cups and reinvest it in our foundation of now so that it continues to pay reward onward for us. Let's see what comes next. Yeah, here we go. This is another card out of yesterday's reading. I did shuffle this deck for quite a while before uh, before cards even started falling out of it for today's message. So here's the Six of Swords. We're moving into calmer waters where we are in a transformation, if you will, through retrograde energy of more challenging or less than favorable energies. We're shifting the frequency there and we're removing obstacles, we're reducing challenge, and we're moving into a greater sense of peace, ease, and grace with our own journey. So it's just time to turn a bit inward according to these cards and tend what needs tending to keep our foundation strong, stable, clear, clean, and supportive of, you know, what's on our horizon, what's in the oncoming. So really the cards and the energy atmosphere are pointing us in the direction of taking an assessment of our resources, taking an assessment of what most needs our uh, attention, and making the appropriate investments. Next we have Look at this, the Two of Pentacles, which is a card about more harmony and more balance. This card is spoken over so often uh, as having too many balls in the air, too many things. Like there's a sense of overwhelm, or at least that's what I've perceived from what other people read on this card. And my feeling on this card is that we actually have... Uh, a beautiful harmony and a beautiful balance, infinitely so, in the two of coins. Like we're managing our world, our sphere of influence, our foundation very well. And in order to continue managing that so well, we have to invest from our overflow. And I feel that that's what the cards have been getting after these past couple of days. Let's take a look at what's on the bottom of the deck. What's in the unseen? What is the universe? Uh, supporting us with behind the scenes. Our first card is, look at this, Page of Wands. What a joyful card, right? Very sweet. You know, the suit of wands is full of creativity, ambition, drive, motivation, passion, uh, excited anticipation. It's also a card that uh, highlights our skills and our talents and we need to engage our skill and our talent to be supportive of everything that's unfolding here in these other cards. Next we have another major arcana. So that's four of them now on the table. There's the strength card. Draw on your strength, draw on your co courage and uh, this is a card that reminds us that our wild free untamed spirit needs a wild free untamed 
uh, foundation in which to dance upon. So let's bring our strengths. Let's bring our ambition and our motivation all together. Let's tap into our knowledge with the emperor and let's create with the divine everything that is supportive of this 10 of cups and so much more. Yeah, here's another 10. Here's the 10 of wands. Talk about having resource. And we've got consecutive cards here in the 10 of wands to the page of wands. Remember that 10s are about fulfillment. And this card is spoken of in terms of having a burden. It's time to set down a burden. I feel differently, of course, as I do about this two of pentacles. I feel that the 10 of wands is representative of all the knowledge, wisdom, resource, passion that we have and it's on overflow in this 10. So it's time to engage our resources and our abilities and channel them in such a way that we bring even greater fulfillment to our world. This is followed by the death card. Hello, Scorpio. Transformation, death and rebirth, simultaneous uh, endings and beginnings happening on this card. And in Lightseer's Tarot, one of the things I really enjoy about the death card is that we see the horizon in the face of death. So this is what we're doing. Uh, this is why we're turning our attention to our skill and our talent and our resources so that we can invest them wisely in the oncoming, ever evolving, ever transforming horizon here. Final word out of the tarot cards, there's the queen of pentacles. And again, she was in yesterday's reading too and her you know, she's the divine feminine aspect of abundance. She's all about the home and the hearth and, you know, family, children, so on. See this as a card as uh, using your divine feminine receptivity to cultivate more in terms of your broadcast, your ripple effect. What does that take? It's the same question we have at the beginning of the reading with the Ten of Cups. What does it take to maintain your foundation of bliss and joy? Well, it takes attention to detail on the home front. And this is where the cards, excuse me, I have hiccups, have been drawing our attention. Very neat. Let's take a look at, <laughs> you know, it's like us getting ready for winter, I guess. Uh, yeah, harvesting in the garden and tending the home front and getting prepared, preparation. Victory favors preparation. Angel answers. If you've got a question, put it to this deck. If you're looking for a confirmation, a sign or a symbol, allow these cards to speak to you. Our first one. You're ready? Yes, you're ready. This is you answering your own inner calling to invest your energy wisely. Next. <laughs> because we wanna keep those coming, don't we? The big happy changes. <laughs> Sweet. Even though I'm not seeing the nine of swords here, I feel it in this reading as if there's been some kind of pressure on us to fulfill something or take an action on something or pull something off the back burner into the now. Um, and I feel that we can show up differently rather than in a pressured sort of way with the mental to-do list, which I know is something that we talked about in yesterday's reading as well. I do feel it here though, Get take the pressure off yourself and approach whatever requires your attention with happiness and joy and fulfillment. Uh, it doesn't have to be this long list that produces a stressful response of, you know, well, I, I just can't do anything else until I do this first. Ask yourself why, why might you be putting that kind of pressure? Did you just learn to behave that way? Um, and it's an old response to tending the mundane aspects of life and the sim you know the simple pleasures of life they do take an investment though it does not have to be a stressful one consider that 
because there's no need to worry. You can let go <laughs> and emphatically say yes to all that needs your attention, your energy, your skill, your talent, your wisdom, your knowledge, your harmony. Bring that to the forefront and then, uh, you know, dive deep into maintaining your foundation of bliss. Final word on the reading, Feminine Wisdom Oracle. How is our soulful presence informing our waking consciousness? We have stagnation. There it is. Great card, great summary to the reading. Anything that we feel we've stagnated or procrastinated upon, now is the time. Now is the moment to free up that energy and allow its expression, bring some activity and energy to whatever it is uh, you've been sitting on. <laughs> All right, everybody, have a beautiful Thursday. Peace, love, happiness, namaste.